and welcome back to 8-Bit Retro Refigged. On this episode we're going to be taking a look at this Commodore 64. This is what I picked up um, at the car boot, I think it was. It was a while ago. Um, it does have a fault on it, doesn't load games through the disc port. I think there's a SID chip problem with it as well, I'm not quite sure, I can't remember. So we're going to get into this and have a look at this one today. If you're enjoying the episodes that I'm creating, um, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell to be notified of up and coming videos. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Empire Strikes Back live stream. If you would like to see more of them live streams, hit me a comment in the bottom and I'll see what I can do. Um, there is some more other games coming up. Um, I still have got to do the Amstrad um, game review. Um, I've still got the, the Shogun or something like that for the Commodore 64 and I've got um, some other games to be reviewing as well so they're, they're still to come up um, for me to do. Also in the pipeline we've got the Commodore 1581 disk drive build. Uh, the case is done, the boards are here. Um, that's been supplied by PCB Way. Um, so I've, I've just got to get the parts to come now to finish off the build for that. But hopefully that shouldn't be too long, it should be over maybe in the beginning, middle of June um, that that video should be coming out. So keep an eye out for that. So while we're on with it, let's get back to this Commodore 64. Let's get to it. So here's the Commodore 64, which I've picked up recently. Um, a car boot sale, believe it or not. Um, it does have a few problems with it, or it did have. One of them with the SID chip, which I've changed that, because um, it didn't have any sound. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just plug the dead, dead test into it. I'm going to pan up to the screen, um, and we'll see what the dead test does. I've already taken out the first three screws, which is the ones on here. One, two, three. That's to get that out. Now we're just going to lift the lid up now and let's take a look inside. So first thing I notice with these when I lift them up is these um, clips at the back here. They're the ones that are very, 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 very small. So you've got to be very careful with them that they don't break off. So I'm just going to take the keyboard connector off now. I'll show you what I mean. There's the clips look, this type, some of them are a solid across here, which is far better. These with the little clips on break off very, very carefully. So when you open these Commodore 64s, just make sure um, when you're lifting it very gently and have a look to see whether it's got them and just ease it off. If it's got the big ones, then you can just lift it straight off. It'll click out and it'll be fine. It won't be a problem. So that's first off, get the keyboard out of the way. I uh, just wanted to have a quick look at the cartridge port, which doesn't look too bad. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the dead test in. So first part of the dead test is the keyboard connector, which loop circuit, which slots on there. The other one, which I forgot to get out, is for the disk drive port. Again, that's just a loop back again on the disk drive. user port interface it goes in there very tight on there that one is funny enough I don't know why but the um, cassette port one's very 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 thin these have got slightly longer leads to get to your joystick port 2 and your joystick port 1 we have the cassette port connector got a little chunk out there, I don't know what's happened to that in the past, but it is very loose on the cassette port, you'll see that. It's how I'm putting that user port in, and I'm just going to pop that in now, look, look. and that's on. A little wire to connect to that port, let's make sure that's on. We'll flip the television on, might help if I put a power cord in. And we'll put the 
diag cartridge in as well. Bit difficult without this case, but we're in. Yeah, we're in now. So I'm just going to pan you up to the screen and we'll take a look at that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it should change. If not, we could have a bad couple of 6526 CIA chips. Come on, run test. See if it comes up with exactly the same. We're exactly the same. So it's looking like we've got two bad CIA chips. You can hear the seed singing away there. Okay, so we're looking at a couple of bad CIA chips. But what's it actually doing? Let's see if it actually works properly first then. So, what I'm going to do now is take the Diag car harness back off it again. Pull the aerial lead out. Don't need to take the aerial lead out to be honest, so I'm going to show you something else. So I've got my arms in the way. Let's take our harness out of the way. You can put, quickly pop, pop the top back on, just be careful of them clips like I mentioned earlier. I'm not doing all with them, I'm just going to pop them on. So we've got faulty CIAs. Going to diag test. So what do the CIAs control? So, the CIA's control, one of them called controls keyboard input, joystick port input. The other CIA controls um, data to the VIC. It also controls serial ports for the data transfer um, for your disk drive. Um, I'm not sure if it does a tape drive, um, but possibly the cartridge port as well. But we know the cartridge port's working because the diag test worked. So. Let's just flip, flip that back on again. So, you can see the screen now. I'm just going to go through. We'll go back our row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, plus, minus, pound sign, clear home and insta. So we've got all those keys across the top. Clear home, insta, you flash the cursor. CTRL. If you do CTRL on white, it should change it to white, which it does. Let's just put that back to blue. Wrong blue. Yeah, I don't even know which one it is now. So. Yeah, we'll leave it on white. So we know CTRL works. Q, W, R, right across the keyboard. Yep, we've got all them and a restore button. So if we do run stop and restore, it should clear the screen. So we know run stop works and restore. Shift, lock. Yep, shift lock works. Commodore key, Commodore key works. Shift underneath it works. Yep. And we can go right across them keys again now and test them. And return will give us syntax error. So we know this the Commodore key and the Shift key work. And we can just go across the bottom, roll now. We've got cursors at the end here, so we know it's going to go up and we press the Shift and it goes. There we go. It went down and up. And we can go right and we can go left. Um, F1 keys won't do anything. Um, so you will have to just press it and you'll see a pulse on the cursor, which I can see the pulse. So that's showing us that, actually... The keyboard's fully working. So if the keyboard's fully working, it's got to mean that the joystick parts are fully working. 
because the joystick ports work along with the keys. So sometimes when you move around with your joystick in part one, you'll get space bars and, and numbers and, and letters that come up on the keyboard. That's the reason why. So that's that part sorted out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put um, an SD card reader in there. And let's see if it loads. I converted it to um, device nine um, because I wanted to use it with my original disk drive. Um, but unfortunately, I, I, for some reason, once you change it, it will not go back. I've tried everything. I've tried flashing firmwares. It just will not go back. It's stuck on device nine. I also extended the cable so it would actually be able to be used on my Commodore 128. So we should be back up and running. We've got his little disk drive now. So if I do load, star, comma, 9, comma, 1, it should load from here. And it does nothing, it just goes searching for X. Well, X, if you know anything about the Commodore, it, it, if you put X there, it just picks up the first file that's on the disk drive. We just have a quick switch off, switch on. So you can actually see the lights on the top of here pulse. I switch it off, switch it on again, look. So you can see them lights pulsing on top of there. At least it showed you that the disk drive is actually working. Um, so if I do load again, let's see if it'll do it. From a, oops, nine comma one. And it just sits and searches, look. If I was to change, it's locked up and all that, I can't do anything, nothing. It, 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 it throws the system completely. So let's just try it again on load comma eight comma one. And remember I did say to you that it won't do it on this one. Um, so let's send it out. It should come up with device not found. So that, that would tell you in itself that when I do it on nine, it sees the device, it starts to load search for it and it locks the system up. So if I press it on now, it's doing the same on comma eight, look. So obviously there's an input um, signal that's coming, not input, an output signal that comes from the CIA once we've typed this command in um, to go and fetch the information from the disk drive. And it doesn't do anything, it locks up. So in my past experience, let's just take that out of the way a minute, we'll lift the lid back off. So my past experiences, like I just said, um, I suspect myself. I'm suspecting. Um, I think it's you two, the, the this CIA, this one here that's at the side, right next to the keyboard connector, controls the key, keyboard inputs, so it goes straight into that CIA. So I don't believe that this CIA is to fault, although it could be. It's quite strange to see as well. They are actually soldered into the board, so I am going to have to desolder that and put a socket in there and put another chip in. Um, but it, what's interesting to me is, is when I look at the date codes, the date codes are exactly the same. So I've got 24, 86, we've got a 652681, six, and we've got a 6526 in here. Normally, you would get matching SIDs, SIDs, matching CIAs, you know, so that's got A1 on there, so you'd expect this one to have A1 as well, which is, is quite interesting really as to why that is, unless they were just picked out of a box and they were all thrown into one box in Commodore and they just grabbed a chip and stuck it in when they needed one, which is quite possible with Commodore. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I've got a nice little socket and we have got a fresh CIA chip this is an older CIA so this is an eight, 19th week 83 as I've involved the other ones were 24th week 86 so this chip is actually three years older than what these are in here um, and this one's dead multiple reasons why um, the CIA's can go down 
A lot of the time it's down to ESD, electrostatic discharge. That comes from your fingers and your clothes. So all you need to do is pick it up and touch the user port, electrostatic straight into there. If you touch the joystick ports on the end, electrostatic straight to the CIAs. <laughs> you know, it, there were no protection back in the day. You can get um, CIA protectors these days. I've seen them on eBay. Um, I will pop a picture up and let you have a look at them ones, what I'm talking about. And I'll put a link to the guy's eBay account if you want to buy some of them to do it um, down in the description. So, without further ado, this board's coming out. Um, a bit of a montage. I'm not going to sit and bore you watching me solder it all, so I'll fast forward it all through. A little bit of music for you to listen to. If you're enjoying the channel, guys, please hit the subscribe and the like button. It does help me quite a lot. Um, if you want to donate anything to the channel, um, if you want to chat to me about anything, the, the email addresses are all down in the description. Um, I am setting up Patreon as well, so that's going to be there soon. It is there, but it's not active at the moment. And we're on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, if you want to speak to us on there as well. So, let's get to replacing the CIA. Well, <laughs> look how easy that come out. Look how easy that dropped off. So you can see, using the right equipment, you can actually remove these chips very, very easily. Um, what I would do is I put the solder station onto the end of the chip. I go onto the leg and I wiggle it around, circle it around and keep going while I'm sucking the air. And I keep going and keep going and keep going. If you do it, if you just, the, the reason why I stand the board up like that and do it this way is, is because if you lay the board down and, and help heat the solder up, where's the solder going to go? It's going to go straight down the chip leg onto the other side of the chip and it sticks to the board, something rotten. And then you've got to start using heat guns, putting more stress on the board and you really don't want to be doing that. So that's the reason why I stand it up like that. 
Um, it is at a bit of an angle because I'm doing it for you guys on the camera. Um, but if I wasn't doing it on the camera, I would have it bolt upright like that. And sometimes, if, even if it's bad, I'll tip it right over this way like that. Just so it can suck the solder and the force solder can float downhill. Because, like I said, if you do it that way up, it'll run the other way and it'll just cause you problems. So that's a CIA chip out that we suspect as being faulty. Here's a new socket for it. Just make sure all them chip legs are straight and they are not. Not chip legs, but they are... Oh. Nope, they're not. They need straightening with the pliers and mount. And let's have a look at this one over here. Is this one straight? Yep, that one's straight. So we can pop that one straight back in and then we'll test the board after we've done this one. So as you can see, straight in there, no problems. We'll pull out the old Smurf poo. Um, I just like to stick it in the middle, just so it sticks it down. And then we can get on with soldering it. So let's do that now. So that's the soldering done. Give it a bit, a bit of a clean up with some IPA. This stuff that I use on here, this solder, it, it is no clean. So you can, if you want, just ignore it and just leave the solder on. Um, but it's always good practice and inspect your work afterwards anyway. Um, sometimes the solder tip can rub off the silk screen on top of a, a, a trace and you, and you might have soldered it. And if you do that, you'll probably end up blowing the chips again. So you're always best off to have a really good clean up around this area and then have a good inspect, make sure everything's hunky-dory and nothing's shorted anywhere or anything like that. This is why I like to give them a really good clean down. Most of that, there's no worse than looking at a dirty board. And if you do it properly, sometimes you can't even tell that it's been touched. Even though you've got a socket on the side and you know it has. You're never going to get it all because it all obviously goes in between the chip legs, but I think that's good enough. That will clean enough. So, where's my little microscope? Because my eyes are not as good as they used to be. And I'll take a quick look at them. Awesome, so how come just smurf poo? 
We don't need that anymore. Let's take it back under there where it belongs. So, we've got a new socket in. What we need to do now is Hopefully this chip is okay. It's been a while since I've um, used this chip, so let's pop that in there. Just that in there, right? Two fingers, push. So that's in. So what I want to do now is I'm going to. Plug it back in and let's see if that problem's resolved. I'm not going to plug it all back in like the way you think, it might look a bit of a mess. Um, because I'm not plugging the keyboard and putting the base back in and everything, you can see wires everywhere. I'm going to put that into the port for the disk drive. <laughs> got wires everywhere, wires everywhere, it looks so untidy. Put that into there, make sure she's switched off. Put that in there. Put the keyboard connect keyboard in. The keyboard is in. And there is disk drive there, look. So I'm just going to rest that up there like that. I know you can't see too much with that, but it's just to show you that the activity lights on here are working. So, we'll switch her on. Until we on. We saw the SD card lights flash. We've got a screen, that's a start. So, will it load? Oops. No, it didn't. It's locked up again. It's done exactly the same thing. Wow. So, that has surprised me. So what am I going to do now, guys? I'm going to change that other CIA chip that controls the keyboard. And maybe that does have something to do with that. Maybe we've learned something new today. Right, so let's get on with that.
Right, so that's thrown me right off scale now. We're still locking up on device nine. It's still doing exactly the same. It's just freezing the system. So the only thing I can think it could possibly be now um, is the PLA. I've, I've, I've never come across that before. Normally PLAs are just gone. Um, but this is just locking straight up. I won't show you a picture on the screen again. Still hanging on the disc input very very strange right so so let's dump that PLA let's put a socket in there and put another PLA in it and let's see if that makes a difference and if it doesn't then we're gonna have to dig in a little bit deeper
Okay. Um, so we've got a socket back in. We will attack off that chip. We've got a socket in. We've got his new PLA here. Oh, new second hand one. Um, pop that in. So that's his new PLA. So we've got his old ones, we've got a CIA chips up here and there's old PLA there. So that's his new PLA in now. So, will it now load a game? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it's gonna load a game this time. Um, it's anything really that controls the ports and stuff like that. Um, I'm very, very surprised they haven't come round when we, when we change the CIAs to be fair. Um, so let's see what the PLA does. So once again, we'll plug it all back in. Show the switches off. Do we still have life? I'll pan you up if we're okay. Otherwise, I'll keep you on the board. TV's on. System's fired back up again. That's okay, let's hit the keyboard. No. So it's still not accessing the disk drive. Well, that's got me boggled. Why doesn't it access the disk drive? Very, very, very strange. Do we still get the lights on the on the disk drive when it comes on? Yeah, we do. So, I'll try it on comma eight, comma one, and it just locks up. It doesn't even say device not present. It doesn't do anything. So, unplug the keyboard. Unplug the AEC. So, we've swapped the PLA. We've swapped the two CIA chips. Made no difference. I can't see the VIC chip doing anything, although it does access RAM that wouldn't cause that. So, before I get the oscilloscope out and start looking over on the oscilloscope, I'm going to leave this for part two video. So if you guys um, have got some ideas, I know where I'm going to be going next with it, but if you guys have got some more ideas, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, tell me what to do, tell me where to go. You've seen me repair these boards before. Uh, one of the previous videos had the same loading issue, um, which turned out to be the CIA. Um, in this case, it's not. Um, so yeah, so there we go. We've got the CIA's to to change. So we've got the PLA. We've swapped that out. Makes no difference to it. The SD to IEC cat machine is okay. I've plugged that into my other system, and it fired up straight away. There was no messing at all. So I know that the SD to IAC is working. It's always good to check. Make sure that's working, otherwise it can lay you down a, a merry dance. Um, so I'm just gonna have a quick look at the cartridge, the connector port, and see if there's any damage in there. And at the back of the connectors on there to have a look at that um, before we finish up. Uh, but yeah, if it, if you guys have got any pointers, if you guys have got any clues to what it could be, um, hit me up in the comments uh, and I'll take a look at what you're saying um, and we'll see that on the part two. Right, just before I do that, uh, what I want to do is put these chips into the ZIF64 machine and I just want to make sure that them chips that we've taken out are actually all right and then we can put them back into the board um, and then we can carry on uh, with the diagnostics on part two. So I'm just going to do that right now. So this is a ZIF. I have taken out the ZIF chips out of there. So now we've got us PLA that's in there now. And we've got us two CIAs that's in there. 
So that starts up everything and you can see that the SD to IEC was lit up. I'll do that again for you just to show you. Don't know whether you can see that, can you? Yeah, you can. So you switch it off, switch it back on. You can't see the blue screen, but we are flashing. You saw the lights flash on there, so I'm just going to go load star, oops, comma nine, comma one, and you'll see these lights instantly change. There you go, look, it's reading. So I can run that now. So it's reading from the SD card again, look, which is as file browsers on there, um, and we've got as file browser up. So that's showing me that um, as CIAs look like they're all okay. Seems to be working on that side of things. Um, and the PLA is okay as well, because that's all okay. I'm just going to pop the deg test cartridge on here and let's see if we can get anything from it. Right, so I've had the desk test in there. Um, we've put the CIAs in, this one in, and we've put this one in, and we've put the PLA in, which I can swap out now and put my other PLA back in. So them are actually working all okay. The reason why I swap that SID out is because, sorry, the reason why I put the yeah, the reason why I put, took the um, Nano Swin SID out is because it was showing up bad on U18, which is the SID chip, um, which there's no need for. Uh, so, put them away. And we know that these three chips, we know that these three chips that could be taken out of that board are all good. So, what do you think it is, guys? What do you think is wrong with this board? Why isn't this board loading games from disk? I've checked this part, that's okay. I've continuity tested that part, it's okay. We've had these chips out. Well, let me just move that zip board out of the way. We've had the chips out, we've tested the chips in the zip board. They're all testing all okay. Right, so that's them chips back in this board. The dead test is still reporting that these two chips are bad. But we know that them chips are good. It's also telling us that the PLA is okay, which we've replaced that. So, what's left? To me, the only thing that's left, possibly, hit me up in the comments if you think I'm wrong, is the CIA, uh, not the CIA, sorry, the kernel. So as you can see, The Commodore 64. The camera did fail and I did continue um, checking other things out. Um, the 7406 chip over here, I swapped that into my 60s clone and it did the same thing so I thought awesome, crapped it. So I changed the socket in that one, put another one in it and I got a black screen. And that was very very strange. Um, so I changed the chip below it which was a 556 just to be on the safe side, put that in a socket, still giving me a black screen, I banged the dead, dead test cartridge, um, and that will give me one flash, which shows me RAM. Really? So, okay, I went ahead and took the RAM chips out, I re-socketed the RAM chips, um, I put um, an SRAM conversion into it just to test it, still give me a black screen. I took the RAM chips out of there and put them into my 60s clone board, and they were still okay. So, all the chips in this system are all perfect and it's all working fine. Um, I do need to purchase a 7406 to put in here. Um, and we do need to be looking at why we've got a black screen now. Um, I did take that socket back off, checked all the continuity of all the traces to make sure they were non-damaged, put another socket back on and it was still exactly the same. So if you've got any ideas, I mean, I know, I know, I know you can, what you can say is, Get your oscilloscope out, have a look with your oscilloscope, see what you can probe around and find that. But I like to do these repairs um, so you guys uh, at home can do these repairs too. Um, so I'll give it a couple of weeks and part two will come out to see if we can get this resolved. Um, I'll have a look at your comments um, and have a look down the alleyways of, of what you're saying and we'll see if we can get this between us, get this 64 back up and running. So that's it for this week's show. Um, there is lots coming up, so please hit the subscribe 
and the notification bell. Um, there is some more things coming in the pipeline. I'm still waiting for them to come through. I don't really want to say anything yet, um, in case they don't. Um, but yeah, keep watching guys. There's, there's plenty coming up. So on that note, we'll see you again. So all I've got left to say is bye.